Hey folks, I'm Shri Vidya and welcome back to my channel Vidya's Vegetarian Kitchen. I'm so happy to share a long video after ages. Uh, today I'm going to share what I cook for us over the weekend. So it's going to be like a complete meal. I'm going to share Pavaka Pitlai. Uh, you know, it's more like a sambar, uh, distant cousin of sambar made with bitter gourd and white radish mash. You know, it's a dry curry. You can even call it as uh, Mullangi Masiyal. That's what we say in Tamil or Thruvina um, Mullangi or Mullangi Thuvatal. You know, it has a lot of names. So that's what I'm going to share and let's get started. All right, let's dive into the prep work. They say good preparation is half the battle, right? For the pit lie, I've taken two bitter guards, approximately 120 grams. I'll chop them into small bite-sized pieces. You know, start by trimming the edges and cutting them lengthwise. You can scoop out the seeds using a spoon or if the bitter gourd is tender, just use your fingers. Once the seeds and inner flesh are gone, chop the bitter gourd into small pieces like this. So what's pit light? You know, it's a South Indian stew, kind of like sambar but with a twist. Unlike sambar, pit light includes legumes along with vegetables. Black chickpeas are typically used but today I'm going with cow peas. I have already chopped the bitter gourd as you can see. For today's pit lie, I am using half cup of cow peas that I soaked overnight. Now I will add chopped bitter gourd, soaked cow peas and one cup of water to the pressure cooker stack. So in another part, I am going to add half cup of tur dal for the pit lie. You know, I will rinse it and then add two cups of water, a pinch of turmeric powder and a little oil just a trick to get that perfectly mushy dal you know i love using pressure cooker inserts and that's what you see here and these inserts let you cook multiple things at once while everything is cooking you know i can prep the masala and clean up the kitchen even so today i'm pressure cooking the thur dal for the pit lie and the legume and the uh, bitter gourd also for the pit lie and now let's get started with the radish mash preparation. You know, it's a side dish that you can enjoy it with hot rice, ghee or as a side uh, with a raita or papad and it's really tasty. For this mash, I have taken about 500 grams of radishes which I have peeled, halved and I'm going to steam them. After steaming, I will grate them. You know, you can skip the steaming and just grate the radish directly but steaming gives it a milder flavor that my family prefers now i have prepped all the things and my pressure cooker stacks are ready i'm going to place them in the pressure cooker with quarter cup of water and cook everything for three whistles once the pressure releases naturally we will continue while the pressure cooker is happening let's make the masala for the pit light you know, this pitlai masala is very similar to Arachivita sambar masala but with coriander seeds. You know, I have couple of Arachivita sambar recipes on my blog, uh, my mother's version and my mother-in-law's version as well. Uh, pumpkin sambar and Arachivita vengai sambar. If you are interested, do check it out. Okay, so now heat a teaspoon of oil and roast quarter cup of coriander seeds and three tablespoons of chana dal. Roast it nicely over uh, medium low heat. Make sure you are not burning up the spices. So coming to the pit lie, what are all the veggies that you can use? You know, typically uh, we make pit lie with uh, brinjal, uh, bitter gourd and uh, cluster beans. You know, these are the three veggies that I typically grew up eating and we usually use black chickpeas. But like I said before, you can use cow peas. Uh, or you can even use peanuts, garbanzo beans, you can use legumes of your choice. And now let's add some dried red chilies. I'm using five dried red chilies, uh, two Kashmiri variety, chili variety and three regular variety just for the color. And also add some urad dal and fenugreek seeds and roast them until golden brown. You know, all the measurements are on my blog post and I will add them in the description also. You can check them out. You know, slowly roast all these spices and we are going to add the coconut finally. 
and uh, you can very well make this powder well ahead you know instead of making as a wet masala you can make it as a dry powder and um, use it just like sambar powder uh, you know whenever you are making the pit lime so now i am going to add coconut and after adding coconut you don't need to roast for a long time you know uh, the coconut can just uh, sit on the residual heat and it can uh, cool down we don't need to roast the coconut uh, completely so i'm going to turn off the heat and let it cool before grinding it to a paste with some water okay so the pressure cooker has done its magic let's carefully open it please be cautious of the steam you know if you are a beginner please be careful and carefully take out the insert pressure cooker insert uh let's open and see as you can see uh you know everything is well cooked here is our uh, uh tur dal like i said just be careful when taking out the inserts and here is our cow peas and uh, bitter gourd mix and the radish so now i'm going to uh, mash the tur dal if you prefer some plain rice with uh, tur dal and ghee set a little aside and season it with salt but today i am using all of my tur dal for the pit lai so i am not uh, setting aside anything so the uh, roasted spices are completely cooled down so i am going to grind them into a smooth paste by adding a uh, half cup of water and here it is and the last prep work is like i'm i typically add a uh, tamarind uh, paste along with this uh, mixture itself because i don't want to discard the bitter gourd cooked water you know it has all the goodness of it but trust me folks uh, this sambar is not going to be bitter at all so i'm going to i have added the tamarind paste uh, with this it's my homemade uh, tamarind paste recipe and this is also on my blog if interested do check it out i will add all these links in the description so now we are we have completed all the prep work for the pit lai and now let's get started with it so i'm heating the same pan again and adding a tablespoon of oil and i'm going to now temper it with mustard seeds fenugreek seeds and little bit of asafoetida you know fenugreek seeds are optional here but a quarter teaspoon uh, really adds a flavor so i wouldn't skip it but again it's just me um i'm adding like 1 teaspoon of mustard seeds and 1/2 teaspoon of uh, fenugreek seeds and little bit of asafoetida add some curry leaves and uh, let the mustard seeds splutter and the fenugreek seeds slightly change color and here i am adding the curry leaves and now we'll be adding the a uh, cooked cow peas bitter gourd uh, mixture with the tamarind paste also again be careful when pouring that mixture because uh, sometimes it will splash and beginners uh, you can uh, totally reduce the heat and slowly add this gently mix it and now we are going to add salt you know i am adding 2 uh, teaspoons of salt and uh, bring this mixture to a gentle boil you know already the cow peas and uh, the bitter gourd are well cooked and i'm using my homemade tamarind paste which is also cooked but i just want to bring all this mixture to a gentle boil so that it's all well combined you can also use regular uh, tamarind uh, pulp you know you can use a small lemon size ball soak it for uh, half an hour and extract the juice and you can add it and now let's add the ground masala uh, rinse the mixture jar with half cup of water and add that as well make sure you are mixing it well so that there aren't any uh, lumps you know pit lai might sound like a lengthy process but as you can see once you have done the prep work it's a breeze uh, reduce the heat and bring this mixture to a gentle boil I usually cover the pan with a lid to avoid the splashes around. And while the pit lai is simmering, we can uh, grate the radish for the uh, masial or tuvatal. And uh, like I said, I'm just going to uh, reduce the heat and cover and cook this uh, mixture until it slightly thickens. 
and uh, now coming to our uh, uh, radish as it's well cooked it's super easy to grate you know you can grate the radish finely or coarsely also here is the grated radish and now let's finish off the pit light before making the mash and as you can see the pit light is uh, thickening it's now time for us to add the mashed uh, thur dal so pitla is typically um, thicker than regular sambar you know it is in middle between kootu and sambar it's not like as thick as kootu uh, and not as thin as sambar so now i am adding the cooked thur dal and quarter cup of um, water and um, i'm going to be adding some jaggery as well you know a pinch of jaggery helps to balance all the flavors it's the same principle of adding a pinch of salt when making sweets you know it's just going to help to balance the flavor and trust me this amount of jaggery is not going to make your pitlai sweet and if you are not a fan of bitter gourd uh, like i said you can make this pitlai with uh, cluster beans or uh, brinjal also those are very popular combos and i'm going to let this mixture simmer and uh, that's it pitla is pretty much done you know now we are just going to add some cilantro and my secret ingredient which is coconut oil a uh, half tablespoon of coconut oil and it just adds amazing flavor you know you can add this to uh, sambar also towards the end trust me folks it it's just um adds amazing amazing flavor do try it and let me know you know definitely you will thank me somehow i feel coconut coconut oil coconut milk makes everything better okay so now pitla is ready and now let's get started with the uh, radish masiel so coming to the masiel i'm making this in my um, cast iron pan so heat 2 teaspoons of coconut oil again i'm using coconut oil you can use oil of your choice um temper some mustard seeds urad dal and chana dal you know uh, i love coconut oil but you can use peanut oil and i highly recommend to use any other neutral oil for this uh, radish masiel cut two dried red chilies and add it that's the only thing that we are going to add for the spice and mix them all well and now add the uh, grated radish you know let the mustard seeds splutter and the dal turn light color and reduce the heat and now add the uh, grated uh, radish you know uh, it's just looks like a mushy thing but uh, again trust me folks it taste amazing and you can just enjoy it with plain rice and ghee also so uh, mix this well and spread them evenly so that it can form a light crust you know that's the advantage of cooking in cast iron pan you know the formation of crust it is really tasty uh, so that's why i'm telling you spread it evenly and uh, let's wait for some time so mix it well and uh, we just need to cook until the residual moisture is all evaporated you know we don't need to cover and cook uh, this radish because it is already steamed but if you are using uh, raw radish grated you have to drizzle some water and cover and cook until the raw earthy smell of the radish is gone completely but for this you know It, as it's already cooked we are not going to worry about that um uh, it's a very basic curry the flavor of uh, comes from the radish and the cilantro that i'm adding here you know i'm adding quarter cup of cilantro and 3 by 4th tea, teaspoon of salt and 1 by 3rd cup of uh, coconut and mix well and that's it this curry is also pretty much done you know uh so basically we are uh, mixing everything and cooking until the moisture is uh, gone and that's it the curry is done you know you can also let it uh, roast a bit but i'm going to turn off at this stage because i don't want to uh, form like a brown crust we like it uh, simple and plain like i said we always enjoy this with uh, plain rice and ghee uh, you know and with uh, raita or with any papad or chips it tastes really really amazing uh coming to today's meal 
I also made some parupusili, uh, but I'll share that in a separate video. You know, uh, parupusili deserves a video on its own. I know already this video has become pretty lengthy. Uh, hope I have not uh, bored you. Uh, so I will share the parupusili in a separate video. And that's it. Our radish uh, mash, you know, call it uh, mulangi, masiyal, tuvatal, or whatever, however you want to name it. It is done. And I'm going to uh, start plating it. So here it is. Uh, I have uh, mixed some rice and quinoa and cooked it together. You know, um, instead of just having plain quinoa rice, I always mix. Uh, so that's what I have added to the plate and some of the radish mash that I have made and uh, here is uh, varapu parupusili again uh, I will uh, share the recipe for this uh, parupusili in a separate video and now comes the hero of the meal the pitlai and of course we need to add some ghee uh, we love our ghee but if you are following a vegan diet you can uh, skip the ghee uh, all the other dishes are naturally vegan so you know you can skip the ghee and just enjoy it with a dollop of gingerly oil too and that's it folks here is the meal plate i hope you all enjoyed it i hope you enjoyed these two recipes do give it a try and let me know your thoughts and feedback uh, hopefully I can share more long videos like this you know I really enjoyed shooting this and I hope you enjoyed as well uh, do follow my blog and my channel for more recipes and I'll see you soon thank you